Thank you for attending our Kick in an Old School Classroom series. I'm Brianna Davis at internationalstudent.com. And today we're going to take a look at how to use your contacts to get a job. Um, now, before we get started, like always, please feel free to send in your questions through the chat feature. At the end, we'll have those answered for you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So, have you ever heard the phrase, it's not always what you know, but who you know? I'm sure that you have, and that's the exact reason why we're having this hangout today. Um, you know, more than likely, most of you have already graduated within the past few months, or perhaps you plan on graduating. Um, so you'll have a degree in hand, you have all of this knowledge, um, but you might not be able to find a job right away. <laughs> and the problem might be that you have all of these other applicants going up against you. They more than likely have a degree as well. They might even have more experience or a better GPA. So you're going to have to have something a little bit extra to push you um, into the next round of applications. And what that little something extra can be is your contacts. So that's why it's so important to develop those contacts and then use those contacts. Because if you're applying for a company that has marketed the job very well, perhaps it's a large company, they might have hundreds if not thousands of other applicants. So use whatever means possible to put you ahead in the application process and a contact is a great way to do that. So put yourself ahead of all of the other applicants Use the best contacts that you know of. Hopefully that will help you a little bit more. We're going to go into who to ask, how to ask them, and things of that nature. So first of all, if you're wondering who exactly you can ask, um, we have a few ideas that you will want to consider. Now keep in mind that who you want to ask is going to vary greatly depending on your own personal situation. You're going to have contacts um, that we don't just uh, discuss here, so make sure you don't eliminate those just because we haven't talked about them. These are just a few general ones that you want to start with. And the first one is looking to past employers. Um, now keep in mind that this does not have to be full-time employers that you've had. Um, they can be employers from an internship. Um, those can provide just as great insight for future employers into your work ethic, your motiva motivation, and then your skill within your field as well. Um, so perhaps you've had an internship at the New York Times whenever you are pursuing your journalism degree. Um, you move on, you're trying to find um, a job at a different newspaper or magazine, something like that. Make sure that you not just list that you had an internship at the New York Times. Make sure that you actually sit down and think of a great contact that you can put that you had at the New York Times. So who is your direct supervisor? Who did you work with all the time who would be able to put in a good word for you? Uh, make sure that you put down that individual as well. Uh, professors. So, professors can help you out a little bit more than just um, bestowing knowledge to you. And um, they can also help you whenever it actually comes time to get that job. But they have to actually know who you are. This is especially um, important if you attend a larger school. You can't just attend class and expect them to be able to put a name with a face. What you'll want to do is you want to um, utilize their office hours that they give you. They should give you a syllabus at the um, beginning of the semester that has these listed. Make sure that you use those office hours. Go in, introduce yourself, ask a few questions. Um, even if you don't have some, make sure that you make some up, find some. That way you have something to chat about. Or go in after class throughout the semester and ask a few questions that you have. Um, I will give you this one piece of advice though, do not go in before class starts and try to chat them up. Usually they're going to um, be pretty busy trying to get things together last minute. That way they can um, give you the best class possible. So don't go in before, go in after. Um, you know, schools in the U.S., this is perfectly acceptable to go in and talk to your professors. So don't feel afraid to do this. Um, it's, it's perfectly fine to do so. It's encouraged. Um, advisors. There's a few different advisors that you could um, reach out to and develop that relationship um, beyond your academic advisor, although that's a great place to start. So academic advisors, resident hall advisors, so your dorm advisor, um, and then international student advisors. Those um, are all great places to start and once again individuals that you'll want to build that relationship with. And then club sponsors. Club sponsors are a great person to put on your reference list. They're great contacts to have, especially if it's for a club that is relevant to your field. So perhaps you um, are pursuing a broadcast degree, or perhaps you already have a broadcast degree, and you're really active within um, the student television station. Make sure that you, if you're a current student, make sure that you get in good with that, um, that sponsor. If you are a past student, then maybe try to you know, call that person beforehand and reestablish that relationship if you didn't make a very strong relationship beforehand. 
Um, but they're great people to have on your reference list, um, especially if you don't have a past job or internship that you have. Um, that way, whenever an employer calls them, they can see how you actually performed um, in your actual area of interest or your degree area. Um, so those are very important. Now, perhaps it's just a grad assistant who is the sponsor, and so you might be a little um, worried to list them. That's fine. That's not a problem. Once again, those are individuals who are able to see you in action. So once again, you've seen the example if you're a broadcast individual and you worked at a television, a student television station, that sponsor was able to see you under action. They were able to see that um, you were a great director, you were a great on-air talent, um, that you, you know, were able to get in the script in time. They can actually tell the uh, potential employer that you would be a great um, asset to their company. So list those. Okay, so how exactly can you ask and what are a few things to keep in mind whenever you ask individuals um, to be your point of contact? So first of all, make sure that you actually know them. If you're going to be putting them down on your resume as a reference, you will want to actually know them. First of all, it's the honest thing to do. Um, second of all, putting an individual down as a reference is pretty much giving your potential employer free range to call them. So it's going to make you look pretty silly if you don't actually know them and the employer calls them and that individual tells them that they don't actually know you. So make sure that you know them, first of all. Second of all, treat your contacts with respect. Your contacts are essentially doing you a favor. They're allowing you to use their name and to give you um, a good few words with your employer, your potential employer. So make sure that you're very kind and polite and that you actually ask them. Before you slap their name down on your resume or your list of references, make sure that you ask if you can use their name. Um, not only is this the nice thing to do, it's the polite thing to do for them, um, but it's also going to help you whenever that employer does give them a call because that contact is going to be more prepared for that call. Um, and a way that they're going to be prepared is after they agree to being your contact, you should immediately send them over your resume and perhaps a few companies that you'll be applying for jobs for or the types of jobs that you'll be applying for. That way, whenever they do receive that call from a potential employer, they'll have their, your resume right there. They can see all of your past experience. Um, they'll get a good idea as to what kind of strengths you would like um, them to highlight. So it's really going to help them and you as well. So make sure you keep those items in mind. Now, whenever it comes time to ask someone if they can be your contact, this might be um, a little stressful for some of you, especially if you're um, more shy than other individuals. But you're really, you're just going to have to bite the bullet and do it because having great contacts is so important. As we discussed previously, it, it really could be what helps you to get the job. It can be what helps place you above everyone else. So you're just going to have to do it. Um, now, here's one tip that you can keep in mind, though, to hopefully make it a little bit simpler for you. Um, take the personality of the individual into consideration whenever you ask. So if you're wanting to ask um, a past employer if they would mind that you list them on, their, on your resume, um, was it someone who is very busy and who wasn't really a chatty person? If so, send them an email. They might prefer that more. Um, if it's someone that you know they really prefer that face-to-face -face time, ask them out for coffee or um, just stop by the office and have a quick chat with them to ask. So take in um, their personality and what they would appreciate most whenever you do ask them. Um, so that will help a little bit. Hopefully they'll be more receptive to how you're asking based upon their personality. So we've covered mostly um, you know, how you can use your contacts for your resume. Um, your letters of your individuals that um, can provide reference for you. But now we're going to talk a little bit as to what you can do with your other contacts that you're not putting on your resume because hopefully you have a number of great contacts um, that you can use elsewhere. So here's um, a few ideas to use. Um, you want to make sure that you use professional social platforms. Um, so LinkedIn and um, Zing, that's one that if if you're based out of Europe or if you um, have had experience over in Europe, you'll be more familiar with. Um, if you're not on these social platforms, there's no better time to add them than now. If for no other reason than to keep your contacts in one place and organize, that's reason enough. Um, but there, you, know, you can do much more things with this and you'll want to um, do much more than just keep them organized on there. You'll want to use it as a means to keep in contact and keep that relationship fresh just like any other relationship, friendships that you have. It's, it goes beyond just starting that point of contact. Developing the contact is just step number one. 
you'll then need to work to build that relationship and keep it strong. So it's a great way to do that um, through these social platforms. Um, next is meet up. If it's someone that you're not too familiar with, you know, it's a contact that you've had in the past, perhaps you sort of fell out of contact for a while, but it's an individual that you think might really have a great lead or prospect for you to get a job, um, make a meet up. Ask them, call them and say, hey, would you like to go out for a cup of coffee? Usually what's going to happen is they'll say, what's going on? You know, how have you been? What's, what's going on in your life? And you can let them know, well, I'm actually looking for a job right now um, in XYZ field. Um, here's a few companies that I've been considering. Um, hopefully, and more than likely what's going to happen is they're going to say, hey, well, here's a company that you want to consider. Or if you're really lucky, then they might say, I know this individual at this company, and so they'll be able to give you their contact information. Um, that's sort of the golden nugget that you're hoping for because that's you know the, the point of contact. It's kind of your way in to say, hey, you can reach out and say, hey, I know this individual um, who told me that you might have a few job openings. So that's kind of um, the main hope for those meetups as well. All right, and lastly, make sure that you show them appreciation. Your contacts are essentially doing you a favor. They're letting you use their name. They're giving you, hopefully, a great recommendation. Um, and you know they might even give you that one golden nugget of the, the name that you can contact to get a job. So show them the appreciation that they deserve. Um, send them a thank you note. If they were able to land you that great job, take them out for dinner. Um, and keep in mind that one day they might also be back in the job market. Um, so take note of that. If you realize or you see that um, they're needing a job, perhaps on the social outlets, um, then reach out to them. Say, hey, what kind of job are you looking for? Um, and then use your other contacts to see if you can bestow the same favor onto them that they did to you. So these are all good things to keep in mind. Um, who you'll want to contact, how to contact them, how to go beyond um, just your list of references. Keep these all in mind whenever um, you're using your contacts because contacts are very important. Once again, it's not always what you know, it's who you know. Um, so keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and take a look at any questions that have come in. Um, if you have not yet sent in your questions and you do have a few, please feel free to do that now. Um, it looks like we just have a few here. And we have, are there any job opportunities for PhD holders in applied linguistics as an instructor or research assistant? Um, you know, I'm sure there are quite a few out there. Um, a great place to start is contact the university that you just graduated from. More than likely, they're going to have a career services, and they'll be able to see what kind of um, jobs they can link you up with. Um, that's a great place to start. Beyond that, um, you might want to try other platforms online, such as Monster, Career Builder, um, things like that. But once again, you know, once you find those jobs, you know, that's, there's a number of jobs listed, and sort of the trouble with having those platforms online is everyone else can see those jobs too. So find those jobs that you want to apply for. Use your contacts um, you know, to help leverage you um, above all the hundreds of other individuals who are applying. Um, or you can even reach out to your contacts beforehand um, without even going to these platforms and see if they know of any jobs available. More than likely, um, if you're um, you know, it seems if you have a PhD, like you said, then you probably have um, a good group of other individuals in linguistics, so they might be able to help you um, with what other jobs are available. All right. Can international students have jobs while they study in the U.S.? Um, you know, often there's going to be, um, you will have an opportunity to have a job, but it's going to be very limited. Typically, it's I'm going to restrict you on the number of hours you can work per week. Usually it's about 20, um, but it's going to depend on your campus. And usually you can only have on-campus jobs. Um, but, you know, really you'll want to contact your, your university and see what options you have um, for you because it could be specific to your situation too. Um, keep in mind, though, that, you know, I know international students is often a struggle because, um, you know, it's, you have a financial struggle while you're studying. But keep in mind that's your number one priority while you're there. It should be um, to focus on your studies. So um, try to utilize other financial aid outlets if possible. Um, I know it can be difficult, um, but there's scholarships, international student loans. Uh, make sure that you actually are able to give your studies 100%. All right. How are the job opportunities for international students? Um, 
see who have a master's. Um, you know, pretty great. The, luckily, the job market has been improving, so you should have quite a few um, good leads right now. Um, as I mentioned before, something that you can do is use the people that you know. See what is available, what jobs are available, what they know of. Um, go on those online sites as well, um, but realize that typically it's going to be much more difficult to get a job through those because there are such um, there's a high number of other individuals using those platforms too. Um, but use your contacts, look in your, your phone book even, look in your social media platforms, um, reach out to those individuals, um, and of course this is all after you contact your school's career services because they are a great outlet too. Alright, so it doesn't look like we really have too many other questions. Um, if you do have any other questions, that's fine. Feel free to send those in later on and we'll get those answered for you. Hopefully this has helped you um, to realize how important contacts are and the different ways that you can use them. Um, and then a few possibilities as well whenever it comes to, to who you can ask. Um, please feel free to visit internationalstudent.com if you have um, any other inquiries on being or becoming an international student or just send us directly. Um, your questions directly through our social media platforms and we will answer those for you right away. Thank you for attending.